300 Blackout, one of my favorite cartridges. However, a little bit like my trademark shorts, I didn't realize this was a controversial opinion until I got on the internet. For some reason, 300 Blackout rustles serious jimmies in the gun industry when it should be celebrated for the big, beautiful Blackout Wonder cartridge that it is. You can use 300 Blackout in any gun chambered in 5.56 with a barrel swap. That's it. Everything else is the same. That's because oversimplified 300 Blackout is basically a 223 casing with a 308 bullet jammed in it. Through arcane Blackout magic, the caliber can use a wide variety of projectile weights and perform pretty well with each of them. On the light end, 125 grain, maybe a little bit lighter. That's a common supersonic 300 Blackout round. It's the same weight as most AK-47 bullets and approximates their performance and range. I think that's absolutely dope, and to use somewhat of a pun, you can go from supersonic 125 or 110 grain rounds that'll give you performance, like an AK-47, giving you an effective range out to 400 yards or so. All you have to do is swap magazines, chamber a new round, and now you've got subsonic 210 grain thumpers that are incredibly effective and quiet out to 100 yards or further. Now, perhaps one of the best 300 blackout ARs you can get is from Daniel Defense. I've already reviewed the Daniel Defense DDM4 V7, their flagship AR, about a year ago. Ryan and I literally tried to break the DDM4 V7, but we failed to do so. Daniel Defense makes one of the best ARs on the market, so it's no stretch to imagine that the ISR, or the integrally suppressed rifle, is one of the best 300 blackout ARs you can get. And for 3400 bucks, I guess it better be, right? The ISR is, of course, an integrally suppressed AR-15 optimized for 300 blackout. What I mean is the ISR has a suppressor actually built in, welded to the barrel, so there's no attaching a suppressor or screwing it in, no worry about baffle strikes or the can coming loose, and no worry about point of aim, point of impact shift. The ISR is made not to work just with subsonics, but it's actually geared to work specifically with lighter supersonic rounds. It uses a 9-inch barrel with a 1 and 8 twist, that's optimized for lighter 300 blackout rounds. Daniel Defense optimized the ISR for hunting without ear protection, so you'll get great performance with hunting supersonic rounds, but not blow your ears out whenever you need to take the shot. To kind of demo the difference that ammo makes, of course, we're shooting 300 blackout, one of my favorite calibers. What's great about 300 blackout is you can shoot 125 grain, something approximating the performance of 7.6239, like the AK-47 round but you can also put in bigger, heavier bullets, like 210 grain, that are going to be subsonic. That is, they're not going to reach the speed of sound, therefore you get no sonic crack whenever you fire it. To demonstrate that, this first magazine that we have here, we're alternating between supersonic, subsonic, supersonic, subsonic. So you can tell pretty substantial difference <laughs> and you could even hear it. I was like, oh shit, we're definitely shooting a drum and we were. Other than being integral to the gun, the suppressor is a somewhat conventional arrangement. You've got an aluminum tube with a stainless steel baffle stack. Daniel Defense installs a large threaded gas block on the barrel. They then thread the suppressor onto this gas block and they weld it in place. That makes this a one stamp gun meaning it's not also a short-barreled rifle. You just have to pay one tax stamp for the suppressor only. That also means that the installation's robust and Daniel Defense gets perfect concentricity without any additional indexing. In fact, Daniel Defense says that they've never had a baffle strike on an ISR since they've been made. Funny enough, one issue they do run into with customers is that some people don't check the manual when they service the suppressor. Daniel Defense says that service is rarely necessary but you do have the option if you want to clean your own baffle stack. As you would imagine, the baffle stack comes out of the front after removing the end cap. The trick is that brilliantly, Daniel Defense has counter-threaded the suppressor end cap, meaning it's lefty, tighty, righty, loosey, with apologies to people from Georgia and Mississippi who just had their minds blown. So that's a common thing as people say, oh my God, I can't unscrew my end cap. They just say, do it the other way. The reason for that simple, and in fact, I wish this were more of a common thing in the US. 
because of the twist direction of the barrel, with a regular right hand thread pattern, the repeated action of firing rounds through the suppressor will eventually unscrew the suppressor's components. Thus, the ISR's end cap is reverse threaded, preventing it from becoming unscrewed by shooting it loose. Now, the good news is that if you do F this thing up, or if you just shoot it so much that you somehow manage to burn out the barrel or the baffle stack, Daniel Defense has a lifetime warranty on the ISR. That's pretty incredible if you ask me, but they say the suppressor is so durable that it's a very, very rare occurrence where they need to replace a baffle stack or one of their famous Cold Hammer Forge Ultra Durable Barrels. Just send it into Daniel Defense. They'll replace your baffle stack and barrel as needed, no questions asked. Yes, this is an expensive firearm, but when you're talking about a top tier AR with a top tier suppressor, custom installed on it, that gives you a lifetime warranty of guilt-free use, the $3,400 MSRP starts to make a little bit more sense. The suppressor's tubes coated with a protective high temperature Cerakote C finish. It comes standard with the MFR XL15 handguard, which has a continuous Picatinny top rail you can see here for optics mounting and it has key mod attachment points. I know, I know, I know. Why key mod, the Americans ask. There's a lot of internal volume in this can, and you can see the can goes almost right up to the walls of the handguard. Both Ryan and I were very excited to get the ISR in. We're both AR nerds, we both love suppressors, so we were both super bummed out to see that this handguard came with key mod, aka dick mod, instead of M-lock or even standard Picatinny rail. However, as it turns out, this is for a very good reason. Because of the clearance from the handguard to the suppressor, M-Lock is simply not an option. It's so tight in here that M-Lock screw backs won't clear the suppressor tube. Now on the inverse, if you did say quad rail, like conventional Picatinny rail, now you're adding a lot of external diameter to the handguard, making it way too chunky and uncomfortable to grip and shoot. I assume that they use key mod because they had a bunch of leftover handguards, but it turns out I was wrong. This was just evidence that Daniel Defense did a great job thinking about the ISR before they actually started manufacturing it. It's a well thought out gun and it seems like nothing about it is accidental. One question that might come up is does the ISR use a standard lower? The answer is yes, it does. It's just a standard Daniel Defense lower in the color of your choice. For that matter, you can also swap the ISR uppers onto other lowers as we did for this video when we used my Bushmaster M16 full auto lower with the ISR upper and it performed flawlessly. In fact, it almost seems like this gun wants to run in full auto. It sounds so good in full auto and Daniel Defense confirmed that the gun's not only full auto rated, but it's actually quieter in full auto because there's a steady supply of gas and vapor in the suppressor that keeps the volume down. We're gonna shoot a full magazine of 300 blackout full auto. The top half of the magazine is going to be supersonic. The bottom half is gonna be subsonic. That's hilarious. It even affected the cyclical rate a little bit, like it slowed down, it definitely slowed down, but um, wow, this works really well with both, so dope. Now I'll tell you, this thing is hot as piss right now. I would not operate this gun, especially in full auto without gloves, no way, no how. You're just not going to be able to do it, it is blazing hot. Now some people are going to make a comparison to the MP5 SD. In fact, I was talking to my buddy Jiga from Polinar Tactical about this gun and the first question he asked me was whether or not the ISR had like a bleed off device similar to the MP5 SD. For those of you who don't know, the MP5 SD is the integrally suppressed 9mm MP5. It'll automatically slow down any 9mm put through it to subsonic speeds. With Daniel Defense, it's quite the opposite and it makes sense. Again, the main draw of 300 Blackout is the versatility of 300 Blackout. You swap mags, you go from light, fast, supersonic ammunition to heavy, slow, subsonic ammunition for use with a suppressor. In other words, you wanna be able to go supersonic and keep high velocity and longer range with the lighter rounds. You don't want the gun to bleed that off. And subsonic rounds for 300 Blackout are going to be naturally subsonic, so they don't need moderation or bleed off either. The ISR I used in this video is the newer Gen 2 version. The Gen 2 is apparently much quieter 
than the Gen 1 ISR, which I've never shot. There are other manufacturers out there who will introduce a gun, and then they'll introduce a Gen 2 with some improvements a few months later, and everyone who is an early adopter gets penalized, and they were left high and dry. As you might expect from Daniel Defense, they're not doing this at all. Not only will they continue to honor the warranty on Gen 1 guns, but if you do have a Gen 1 and you want to replace your Gen 1 baffle stack with the quieter Gen 2 baffle stack, just call up DD, they'll replace it for you at no charge. In other words, the Gen 1 owners are getting a Gen 2 suppressor upgrade at no charge if they want it. Very cool, and it's the kind of customer service I expect from Daniel Defense. This gun's $3,400, so why not just buy a V7 and a suppressor? Does integral suppression really do much for you? I brought my suppressed Ruger American Bolt Action out there with a Dead Air Primal screw-on suppressor to see how it compared to the ISR. All right, so a good test of how quiet the ISR is is to compare it to a bolt action. This is the Ruger American, which I like a lot in 300 Blackout. Really inexpensive, like sub $500 bolt action rifle. It's going to be extremely quiet. It's got the Dead Air Primal on it, which isn't going to be the quietest can you can use because this is a 458 caliber can that we're using on a 300 Blackout. So the can is actually a little bit bigger Diameter-wise, the baffles are bigger than they need to be, so it's not going to be as quiet, but this is still going to be very quiet, mainly because you're not going to have any action noise. The only action noise is the manual action, unlike an AR, where you have gases escaping and you've got the action racking whether you want it to or not, as with any semi-automatic rifle. So you are going to have a much more quiet experience with the bolt action. Now then again, this one's not integrally suppressed. We have the suppressor hanging off the end of the gun. With the Daniel Defense, the suppressor is actually a part of the gun. So I think we're gonna get comparable performance between the two, but let's shoot both just back to back and see what we find out. All right, you guys heard that first round pop too. So that first round was much louder, but that's common whenever you have that set up. Now, here we go, three out of the Daniel Defense. So that one got sequentially quieter as well. You had like the first round pop out of the Daniel Defense ISR, second round, third round. Now, by the third round, they sounded pretty comparable. As you can hear, both guns had a first round pop. That's your first round shot. It's typically the loudest because there's no gas in the suppressor. With the bolt action, the second and third shot sounded the same because with conventional screw-ons, there's less internal volume. So it gets gassed up after the first shot. Every shot after that will be quieter. Now the Daniel Defense, on the other hand, had a first round pop, a slightly quieter second round pop. I would say to our ears, the third round from the ISR was just as quiet as the third round from the conventionally suppressed bolt action, which is amazing for a semi-automatic rifle that has a working action while you're firing. Well, there's no replacement for displacement. The ISR is so quiet because there is a massive amount of internal volume in this can. Therefore, it actually takes two or three shots to fill the can with enough gas to eliminate that pop meaning you need to get at least a couple of rounds through it before you get optimum suppression. It was very impressive to hear that third round go off from the ISR and sound about the same as an ultra quiet suppressed bolt action. Of course, if we had a suppressor of the same size or the same setup on the bolt action, the bolt would have been quieter simply because there'd be no action noise and no gas coming out of the action. However, this is one of the quietest semi-automatic 300 blackouts that I've heard, if not the quietest. Now let's talk about the negatives. These are kind of soft negatives that come with the territory. Price and heat. It's Daniel Defense. It's got a suppressor built into it. It's going to be expensive. $3,400 MSRP is pricey as shit. But in my opinion, this is one of those cases where you do get what you pay for. And I've got to tell you, a lifetime warranty on a suppressed firearm and the suppressor that comes with it, 
especially one that you might shoot full auto, is worth it. If you've got the same kind of compulsion that I do, where you're really afraid to shoot out a valuable gun that you own. Related to that, you're paying 3400 bucks for this gun, but it comes with pretty much a standard GI trigger and pretty much a standard charging handle. Now, I've been waiting for months to get my hands on a review copy of the ISR, and about the same time I made the request for the ISR, Silencer Co. sent me their new gas-defeating charging handle. I didn't install it on any guns before. I set it aside specifically for this review. Here it is right here, because everyone seems to be really pumped up about this charging handle. This is a charging handle that basically seals off the part in the upper receiver, right here, kind of where the charging handle meets the upper, where gas blowback will smash you right in the face, and it feels a little bit like you've been tear gassed, of course. I go through all that trouble to set this aside, and I left the damn thing at home for this review. My range is an hour and a half away, so unfortunately, the jury's still out on this charging handle from Silencer Co., but the least I can do, since I forgot it, is at least plug it for my friends at Silencer Co. as a possible upgrade option if you do get the ISR. And as I mentioned, the heat. This gun gets really, really, really effing hot. I mean, it's got a massive suppressor in it with a pretty thin handguard, which Daniel Defense is well known for. Tough as this gun may be, I would not shoot it without gloves. Other than that, I don't have anything to complain about. This is a niche firearm for a discerning buyer, but if you've got the money and this is something that you want either for LARPing at the range or for hunting or even for home defense, I think it's a great option. I'm not going to try to convince you that this gun's a good idea if you aren't interested specifically in an integrally suppressed high-end AR-15 with a lifetime warranty. But if you are, then I would say, hell yes, this is worth the money. Silencer Shop is the best place to pick one of these up because they can walk you through all the paperwork and the process of applying for the stamp. And at least at the time of filming, they're sold out of these guns because Silencer Shop said that they would do a promotion where they would pay for your tax stamp if you bought an ISR. That's all it took. These guns are gone. But I'd at least email the guys at Silencer Shop to see if they'll let you back order one. <sighs> Sorry, guys. I'm just sad. Sad because I've got to say goodbye to you. And sad because I've got to say goodbye to the Daniel Defense ISR. Unfortunately, this one's not mine. It's a T&E copy from Daniel Defense, so it's going back tomorrow. But the good news is we do have great sponsors like Ventura Munitions, who provided all the 300 blackout ammo we used in this video. If you want the best prices in 300 blackout, check them out. Also, check out Top Gun Supply if you're looking for a 300 blackout firearm that maybe isn't quite as gussied up or expensive as the ISR. Check out Top Gun Supply. Now, would you like to maybe win a free gun? If you would, check the description below or check here, this link you can see on screen, go to tfbtv.gun.team. There are details on how you can sign up at Subscribestar or Utreon. If you support us at the $5, $10, or $25 level on either of those platforms, you're automatically entered to win one of four free guns every month. But you don't need to do that. We're just happy that you're watching. Take care.